Today on KUJH News, KU football may have found its new head coach. We have the latest on the search. Plus, the Lawrence Salvation Army hands out coats for those in need. One woman shares her story. And decorating the tree may be a holiday tradition, but it's also a cause for house fires. We'll explain how you can be safe this winter. KUJH News starts now. From the University of Kansas, you're watching KUJH News. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Sierra Upton. KU may have a new football coach. ESPN and Fox Sports are reporting that David Beatty is expected to take the helm next year. KUJH sports reporter Nick Price is live at the Anderson Football Complex. Nick? Yes, it has been confirmed that Texas A&M assistant coach David Beatty is in Lawrence. He's actually on KU's campus right now interviewing for the head coaching job. ESPN and Fox Sports reported earlier today that he is going to accept the job. Now, no word out of KU Athletics as to whether that is true or not yet. We're still waiting on that information. We'll get that to you. But it looks like we could have the 38th coach in Kansas football history as David Beatty patrolling the sidelines next year. Back to you, Sierra. All right, thanks, Nick. We'll have more coming up later in sports. Friends and family gather on campus today to celebrate the life of KU student Gianfranco Villagomez. Gomez died one year ago. His parents and brother traveled from, K from Peru back to see the Hill Black Hill Spruce planted on the campus in his honor. The tree signifies the loss of a fellow student. His family is grateful for what KU has meant to their sons and want to say thank you to the community. The family will hold a mass on December 6th at the St. John Evangelist Church at 6.30 p.m. A Douglas County District Court judge has temporarily blocked a KU student group's request for information regarding a KU lecturer and the Koch brothers. Students for a Sustainable Future has been trying to get records from KU over employment and correspondence for lecturer Art Hall of the Business School. The student group says they're trying to get the hiring contract and correspondence from Hall to see if the Koch brothers were involved in his hiring. Art filed an injunction to stop KU from releasing the documents. But I believe the restraining order is in place until Dr. Hall's lawsuit goes forward and there can be a full hearing on the matter. And so, um, you know, theoretically, after the full hearing, the restraining order could be vacated. There has not been a date set for the hearing. Winter is coming, which means chilly weather and bundling up. But in Lawrence, some are sleeping on the cold streets. According to the 2013 Homeless Point in Time count, more than 200 people are homeless in Douglas County. Half of those are single individuals and half are families with children. Lawrence has a community shelter for the homeless, but the Salvation Army says people still sleep on the streets. They say the community can help. Just kind of supporting um, volunteer wise or donation wise to be able to help us meet the need that is ever growing. One way the community can help, the annual Lawrence Share the Warmth Coat Drive. The event allows anyone to come in and grab a clean, warm jacket for free. But for one person, being able to get a winter coat for themselves and a loved one is much more meaningful. KUJH reporter Thomas Hoppo has the story. I never thought I'd live like this in my life. Anne True has had a rough year. After separating from her husband, True found herself with no job and no place to live. Basically walked down Mass and I was just crying that day, didn't know where I was going to go. But this gentleman, I walked over to him and just like God sent me to in front of him and I was just crying and told him my story. And he said, well come to the house and I'll make you something to eat and you could stay. She didn't even have a coat until going to the Salvation Army's coat drive. This one right here caught my eye. Scotch cleaners cleaned thousands of donated winter gear. Did you find any? Okay. And volunteers started handing out jackets on Thursday. Yeah, there's a lot of people out here that are in need of, of help. True tried on three different jackets. After finding the perfect coat, it's warm. I actually really love it. I'll get this right here in a minute. There you go. Thank you. True heads out to walk in the cold. Pretty much, yes, every day. A few weeks into the first job she's had in a long time. I haven't worked for 13 years, like I said, and uh, it was hard at first, but I'm getting used to it. What some may think is just a simple coat can make all the difference. Today's a better day. I'm crying because I'm, I'm just sad that I'm living like this, and uh, I will make it. Thomas Hoppo. I'm having a good day. 
KUJH News. Anything left over from the coat drive will be donated to nonprofit groups. Experts say this flu season may be more severe and your flu shot may not be as effective. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention report the seasonal influenza AH3N2 virus is most common right now. This strain results in a more severe flu. It's a mutation from the strain in the vaccine, which means a flu shot may have less protection. Doctors still say it's worthwhile to get the vaccine. There's other strains of the uh, influenza in there, and even the one that has had some minor genetic changes, there's what we call cross protection, meaning that uh, there is something on the, in the original vaccine that will still protect against this one that has undergone a minor change. According to the CDC, flu activity is currently low in the U.S., but it is increasing. An update on the university's policy for travel to Ebola-affected countries. All faculty, staff, students, and KU visitors who have gone to affected areas must notify the Office of International Programs before returning to or arriving on campus. They'll undergo a screening risk assessment and get instructions for health monitoring. Coming up on KUJH News, we're still hours away from tonight's game against Florida. How students are preparing for tip-off. Plus, no one wants to see their Christmas tree go down in flames. We have the tips to keep your home flame-free this season. Stay with us. The holiday season means people are busy decorating their homes, but it's also the most likely time for house fires. The National Fire Protection Association says that December is the peak time for home candle fires. Stringing up lights can also be dangerous. One little spark from damaged wires on a dry Christmas tree can ruin the holidays. Dry trees are, are incredibly combustible. Even a spark in, in the right place on a dry tree will ignite it very quickly. And we're talking about almost explosive potential. Lawrence Fire Medical offers some tips to stay safe this winter. Choose a tree that feels soft and supple with needles that don't fall off when you shake them. Use clips rather than nails to hang lights. Turn off your lights before going to bed and don't decorate a tree with lit candles. Try flameless candles instead. Tonight, the Kansas Jayhawks take on the Florida Gators in men's basketball. Right now, hundreds of students are sitting so they can stand in the best spots in Allen Fieldhouse. More than 100 camping groups are signed up to fill the student section. Students camp from 6 a.m. To, to 10 p.m. in the days leading up to the game. It's convenient, like on our way back from class or our way to class. You can just stop by here if you have to camp, then be on your way. Hank Cavanero will have more on tonight's game coming up in sports. And if you're going to the game, you might need to bring an umbrella. Jessica LaBelle is here to tell you more about this weekend's weather. Jessica? Thanks, Sierra. We have been seeing rain showers throughout the day today. They did start sometime around 4 a.m. and they will continue through about 7 p.m. tonight. Lawrence is totaling around an inch of rain tonight. And as that system keeps moving off to the east, we're going to keep some of that cloud cover around tonight. And we could see some areas of dense fog. So if you're out driving after midnight, be cautious of that because we could have reduced visibilities of only a quarter of a mile. Let's talk about temperatures tomorrow. As you wake up in the morning, we're expecting a temperature of only 36 degrees. It's going to be a little bit colder tomorrow because of that system that's moving off to the east. And we're only warming up to 39 by noon and then staying around 40 by 6 p.m. But lucky for us, we are going to keep warming up after tomorrow. Let's take a look at the temperatures further into the week. By Sunday, we can expect a temperature of 47 degrees. It's going to be a little bit breezy, but feel a little warmer than it will tomorrow. And then we'll be back into the 50s for Monday. Back to you, Sierra. Thanks, Jessica. Now we have Hank Cavanero here with us to give a look at sports. Hank, I hear we have a new All-American Jayhawk. Yeah, Lea Liana Salazar from soccer. She was named uh, third string, third team All-American, which is great for her. Congrats. And volleyball hosts the first two rounds of the NCAA tourney at a venue called Horse West Plus. Football coach and his name's not Clint Bowen. We'll have that and more for you when we return. Stay with us. Welcome back to sports. A familiar face could be back on the sidelines this fall for the Jayhawks. Numerous outlets, including Fox Sports and ESPN, are reporting David Beatty will be the next head coach for the Kansas football team. We have not received confirmation on the hire, but did confirm that he was on campus today for an interview. The more on Beatty's background, we bring in 
KUJH reporter Nick Price, who's out of the Anderson Football Complex. Nick? Thanks, Hank. You know, as you alluded to, BD is no stranger to the KU football program. He's sent spent two separate stints here with the Jayhawks, once in 2008 and 2009 as a wide receiver coach, and then once as the co-offensive coordinator under Turner Gill in 2011. And if there's two things that Beatty is known for, it's coaching receivers and recruiting. Uh, you'll remember back in 2008, Desmond Briscoe had the best wide receiving season by a KU wide receiver in the history of the program, and also one of his big recruits from back then, James Sims, and I think that turned out pretty well for the Jayhawks. So it looks like, if all goes true, uh, that we will be looking at David Beatty being the 38th coach of the Kansas Jayhawks. Back to you, Hank. All right, thanks, Nick. To basketball, last year's inaugural SEC Big 12 Challenge didn't fare too well for the Jayhawks down in Gainesville, and tonight offers a chance for sweet revenge for the Hawks. The Gators and Jayhawks match up again, this time at Allen Fieldhouse. Kansas is coming off their fourth straight win over Michigan State in the Orlando Classic Championship. The Hawks beat Sparty 61-56, led by Perry Ellis, who had 17 points and nine boards in the outing. He also snagged tournament MVP honors. Coach Self thinks defense has been key during their tough early season schedule. Uh, when you play good people, you, you, you sometimes lose, especially when you're, you're beat up, and they've been really beat up. But they're healthy now. And, uh, you know, I've watched the tape from last year, and they just, just, even though the game ended up being respectable from a score standpoint, I think it was six, uh, uh, they, they, they totally dominated us. And we played awful. And, and uh, uh, you know, they were the best defensive team in the country last year, and they're very good defensively again. That game tips off at 8 o'clock on ESPN. So far, the Big 12 has been dominating the challenge, winning four of the first five games. The volleyball team hosts the first and second round of the NCAA tourney tonight in Topeka. That's because of the basketball game tonight in Allen Fieldhouse. Our own Josh Kerlek has more on KU's temporary new digs. The season certainly hasn't been easy for the Jayhawks, but now they are just hours away from beginning what they hope is a long NCAA tournament run. Call it a home away from home for the Jayhawks. Torish West, right? The KU volleyball team hosts the first and second round of the NCAA tournament this weekend at the spacious Kansas Expo Center in Topeka. Well, I mean, it's just, there's just a different feel to the building. Um, it's not as intimate. The site was moved to Topeka because of the KU Florida men's basketball game tonight in Allen Fieldhouse. For the team, it doesn't matter. We've played well on the road this year, which is helpful and we have our fans that are going to be able to come here so it's almost like we get the best of both worlds. It's not Horse or Allen which of course feels like home but we're as close as we can be and we're going to use that to our advantage. We've talked about what it is a privilege to uh, represent our athletic department, our university and if it's in Topeka, if it's in Lawrence, if it's in Kansas City, it doesn't matter. We're going to play hard and we're going to play well. KE was 10-5 and five away from home this season. They'll try to continue that success tonight. In Topeka, I'm Josh Kerlack, KUJH Sports. All right, thank you, Josh. KU's first round opponent, Arkansas Little Rock from the Sun Belt Conference. They boast the longest current winning streak in the country with 24 matches in a row. Tonight's game starts at 6.30 and you can watch it live online. Just go to KUAthletics.com and click on volleyball. And finally, the women's basketball team is hosting the University of Incarnate Word last night. First half, Natalie Knight knocking down the shot, refs Call it a two, it puts the Hawks up eight. Later, Knight coming down and feeding her teammate in the post. Chelsea Gardner gets the bucket in traffic. Hawks up 27-18. And if it works once, why not go back to it? Knight, Gardner, two-point conversion once again in the lane. She ends the night with 17 points. And Lauren Aldridge getting the takeaway, turning defense into offense, using a little give and go here with Knight laying it in. Incarnate Word got the ball back, but however, great play by Asia Boyd takes it coast to coast, and she's going to cut right through the lane, and boy, it's that smooth, and it puts the Hawks up 58-44. Here we go, the last highlight back on offense. Boyd laying it on with the tray. The Jayhawks win 68-46. Now their focus is on the Cal Bears this weekend. It was a lack of focus, a lack of energy and intensity just to, to start the game, really. But um, we also know how we need to play and how we're going to have to play um, on Sunday to be, in order to beat Cal. And that game against the Bears is scheduled for 5 p.m. on Sunday. Sounds like some big games this weekend. Yeah, I think the biggest is going to have to be, not even in Lawrence, in Topeka for the uh, NCAA tournament with volleyball.
Can't wait for that. Yeah. And if you're looking for something non-sports related to do this weekend, Downtown Lawrence is hosting a Winter Wonder Weekend. As part of the festivities, the Big Brothers Big Sisters organization is preparing for its Gingerbread House Festival and auction. The houses are locally crafted and donated. They'll be auctioned off tonight to the highest bidder at Abe and Jake's Landing. The weekend's events start tomorrow morning with the Lawrence Old Fashioned Christmas Parade at 11 o'clock on Mass Street. Uh, we came up with the idea to kick off the holidays in downtown Lawrence, you know, to do it with style like nobody else can do. Other events this weekend include Santa sightings, horse-drawn wagon rides, and caroling. What do you guys have planned for Christmas? Yeah, um, I'm excited. I get to go back home down to San Diego. It should be should be a fun time. I'm heading back to Colorado to hit the slopes. Mm. Oh, yeah, <laughs> going to visit family too. Sounds like pretty family, fun. Day. Family holiday. Family mm -hmm. holiday. Well, that does it for your Friday news. Have a great weekend.